So my power is out here in Portland, Oregon again. It's happened quite a bit lately. And since there's not much else to do, I thought I'd peek around in the velvet worm tank and I can see one moving right there, just about to crawl under the log again there. And I saw one moving back and forth in the mosses over here a moment ago. Peacock moss, peacock spike moss is looking really great, of course. But what was most interesting was to see this one velvet worm up here doing sort of an arboreal thing in the spike moss. That I was not expecting. some views of them from the underside here that we don't normally get. You can see the mouth of it there. It like it was drinking. <laughs> drinking. I don't think it was singing. I'm quite getting the zoom on this that I'm wanting, but I'm doing this freehand and so already and I brought some roaches up that I'm going to put in here maybe we can get lucky and see some kind of feeding response here perhaps in this one over here Roach right up here near the edge. Get that zoomed in. Oh, I'm at a bad angle. I'll see if I can hold this still. So, roach on the left, velvet worm on the right. Oh, there it was. I could totally see the slime and it entangled the roach, its antennae, the velvet worm. It must know it like, I'm gonna not talk so loud, like a fish on a line. You can feel the roach moving around there, it must. Very carefully. Gingerly, slowly exploring its prey. Ah. <laughs> I'm so happy. I've been trying to capture this on film for a year or more. Oh, just reeling it in. Look at that. Now I wonder a bit vibrations of my voice or the light here will bother it. These velvet worms were in complete darkness. Darker than usual, actually, on account of the power outage. And there it goes. Mouth. Now, right up to the roach. I've never actually seen one actively feeding on its prey here in the tank either. The mouth is quite a bit more powerful. It has a clasping mechanism than I had expected. There's some debris there on the side of the tank that's obscuring our view. But interesting that Roach is completely immobilized. And, oh, I've got more roaches and more velvet worms. I wonder if we'll be able to recreate this here in other parts of the tank in a few moments. I don't think I can probably get much of a better shot than this, but I'm going to try. I'm going to go get my magnifying clip.
Uh, I can actually see one more velvet worm down there in what I call the cavern. Let's see if I can reveal it to you. It's right down there in the very middle of the screen at the moment. See it there? I'm going to drop another roach into that area. It's kind of the spot like in Clash of the Titans where, <laughs> without being too graphic, um, the Kraken is fed in one particular spot. And this is where I always drop the roaches. Oh, I see that there's another one back there. Another velvet worm. A thicker, a larger one. Let's take a peek back here again and see what's happening. Oh, that one seems to be crawling off away from its prey. But it will find that later, I'm quite confident of it. Just cover that back up there. I'm just going to drop another roach out here in the middle. We'll see what happens with that one as the night wears on. And I can see that our one down in the cavern here is now covered with slime. They have ensnared it there. Still moving a little bit. Well, that's very interesting. There was something white. I wasn't sure if it was coming out of the velvet worm or the roach, but it was a bit of a tug there before it finally broke free of it. And now I think the velvet worm has decided it doesn't like my light anymore. And it's done this a few times. I think it will go away and then return. Ooh, maybe we're gonna get some mouth shots here of the velvet worm. No, don't pull it back there. It's just manhandling that roach. Got it in a full Nelson. It's kind of interesting how they negotiate the slime. I've seen the slime stuck on the back of another velvet worm and some moss had then gotten stuck to that and that poor velvet worm was really encumbered, burdened by having that glued to it. Oh, you see the mouth right there. So, Pretty much just get through the exoskeleton there and suck out the soft innards. Oh, I'm really happy with this shot. You know, could have been Alice and the caterpillar. She got lucky. Absalom, the blue caterpillar. If anybody knows who this roach is, it's the velvet worm at this point. It's got that thing in a mind meld. Dare we take it in a little closer? OK, 
camera gets pretty shaky at this magnification while I freehand this. Now this night has definitely exceeded my expectations. Not just capturing it, spitting the slime onto the roach, but this feeding behavior. Always a good access point. Mantises do this a lot, right back behind the head. It's an access point between the heavily sclerotized or armored head and the thorax back there on the roach, the pronotum, that area behind the head, right at the juncture there, the neck, you could say, it's a soft entry point for the velvet worm. Going to pop on the attachment lens and hope we get lucky with an even closer shot. There we go. forgot to breathe. I've taken video thousands and thousands of bugs and so many videos of so many particular species and I think this is probably the coolest video I have ever captured. I've never uploaded it to YouTube, but I did once take a video of a millipede hunter beetle capturing an ivory millipede. It's a beetle larva, but I digress. Bubbles are forming in the head capsule of this roach as the velvet worm sucks out the liquefied tissues from it. You can actually see some sclerotized darker mouth parts of this velvet worm moving within the head capsule of the roach as it, parts of its mouth protrude out and into the head capsule of the roach. Absolutely fascinating. At least I thought I saw sclerotized bits there. I'd like to see it one more time to confirm. A lot of times when I'm watching things back later, that's when I really learn a lot and see things that I may have missed the first time. See the little string and beads of slime there. We've seen in prior videos the remains of these roaches after the velvet worms have fed on them. But I had yet, up until this point, been able to document the actual feeding. It appears that there is a dark black simple eye there near the base of the left antenna.
their skin texture always reminds me of fingerprints and I wonder if the patterning, those dimples, those little papillae are unique to each individual. Where do you go? Like a hammerhead shark now, circling back. Perhaps a fan of the light right now. So fluid, so capable of moving backwards and forwards. I wonder there if it is recouping the slime. They do that, they recycle. It's very expensive to produce biologically. Liquid. And you can see how taut, how strong that strand is. Holding up the weight of the velvet worm as it leans over to resume feeding on its meal. I think that forward most facing bump is where they shoot the slime out. The feet are called lobopods, and just under the antenna, which I can see has a small restriction there at the base, there is that other bump, and I believe that's where the slime is shot out of. those little bumps on the bodies and then just every once in a while we can see sharp little black scraping mouth parts of the velvet worm. See the antenna of the roach there like a rope on top of the carapace of the roach. Now well, there's less and less of that roach. The velvet worm has basically sucked out the majority of the tissues at this point and just really kind of mangled the roach as it continues to feed now down near the tail end of the roach. While the velvet worm continues to feed, a small springtail is 
popping up every once in a while to see what's going on. It reminds me of a little rabbit just curiously poking its head out of a hole every once in a while to see what's going on, maybe to gather a little bit of the spoils of the velvet worm here. You can see the eye of this velvet worm rather clearly in this particular clip. Well, some of the slime is tethered to the plant, and so I don't want to disturb things any more than is necessary. We accomplished our mission here tonight in documenting in rather impressive fashion from a personal standpoint. Best I've done in documenting the hunting of velvet worms here in captivity. And it's a good night for me. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you have any questions about anything, please write them down in the comments. Always hit the like button. It's greatly appreciated. Feeds the algorithm. If you want to see the video about how I set this tank up, you can find it in the Velvet Worm playlist. See you again next time. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit the little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching.